Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Surabhi Sharma. At the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday the 8th of November. Security stepped up on Indian side ahead of Kartarpur corridor inauguration. Ceasefire would show Taliban's will for peace, says Afghan president's senior advisor. And dengue cases continue to turn up across Nepal's capital. And now for all the details. Security was stepped up on the Indian side on Friday at the site of the cross-border Kartarpur corridor, scheduled to be inaugurated on Saturday by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The corridor will enable visa-free entry of Indian pilgrims into Pakistan to visit Kartarpur Sahib Shrine, the last resting place of Guru Nanak, the founder of Sikhism. Elaborate security arrangements were made on Friday on the Indian side at the site of the cross-border Kartarpur corridor scheduled to be inaugurated on Saturday. Preparations were in full swing a day ahead of the inauguration of the Pilgrim Corridor by Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The Kartarpur Corridor will enable visa-free entry of 5,000 Indian pilgrims to visit Gurdwara Kartarpur Sahib in Pakistan, the last resting place of Guru Nanak, the founder of Sikhism. The corridor has been established to commemorate the 550th birth anniversary of Guru Nanak, which will be celebrated across the globe on November 12th. No, our police is completely alert and we know about the challenges and we are also doing strengthen more because of the Kartarpur Sahib corridor. So, whatever it will be, we will do it with infrastructure, security infrastructure, manpower, we will do it with all kinds of things. Thank you, Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji, I have a great name of the Vand Shakura, संदेश देता हिगा उस अंतम स्थान दे दर्शन दारे जेड़े या कल तो शुरू हो रहे ने बहुत वधिया दोनों देशों दा बड़ा शलागा जोग उपराला वा इंडिया एंड पाकिस्तान आफ्टर नेगोशिएशन साइन दी लैंडमार्क एग्रीमेंट टू ऑपरेशनलाइज करतारपुर कॉरिडोर लास्ट मंथ दी सिक्स इन इंडिया हैड लॉन्ग सॉर्ट � in Eastern Pakistan, thousands of protesters under the banner of Pakistan's Jamiat Ulema Islam Fazl Party continued their sit-in protest against the Pakistani government for the eighth day on Friday. They have been demanding resignation of Prime Minister Imran Khan, accusing him of rigging the 2018 general elections. The anti-government Azadi of Freedom March, led by firebrand cleric, come politician, Molana Fazlur Rahman entered its eighth day in Islamabad on Friday. Thousands of Islamist protesters have camped in the city since October 31st under the banner of Rahman's Jamiat Ulema Islam Fazl or JUIF demanding Prime Minister Imran Khan's resignation, accusing him of rigging the 2018 general election with military support. The political strife comes as Imran Khan's government is struggling with the economy. Khan won the election last year on promises of breaking Pakistan away from its legacy of corruption and to create jobs for the poor. Maulana Fazul Rahman, while addressing the protesters on Thursday, said, the country will become bankrupt if Imran Khan's government is allowed to present the third budget. The Prime Minister has dismissed calls to step down. Earlier on Tuesday, two rounds of negotiations between the Maulana's team and the government ended without any breakthrough. Moving on, the Awami Action Committee in Gilgit, Baltistan has raised concern over locals being denied their basic fundamental rights. Activists, while addressing a public gathering, recently said people with non-domicile status are being serving in government departments in the region even after the Supreme Court's decision. Leaders of Awami Action Committee recently held a gathering to raise voice against the struggles of people living in Gilgit, Baldistan. 
Activists have been vigorous in the endeavors to get freedom from the clutches of Pakistan, which has been misruling the region for more than seven decades now. One of the leaders of the Awami Action Committee recalled this year's decision of Supreme Court and said still people with non-domiciled status are getting government jobs in the region, which is against the verdict. <laughs> Indigenous people of Gilgit Baldistan have long been asking Pakistan to give them their basic fundamental rights, including government jobs in their own region. However, their demands have fallen on deaf ears. Activists blame that over the years, the Pakistani state has been trying to change the demography in the illegally occupied region through such moves. In East from Afghanistan, senior advisor to Afghan President Ashraf Ghani, Vahid Omar, has said that a ceasefire will show the Taliban's will for the peace. The remarks come ahead of proposed talks in China on the Afghan peace process. Afghan President Ashraf Ghani's senior advisor for public and strategic affairs, Vahid Omar, on Thursday said that the government wants to gauge the Taliban's will for the peace process, and this could be seen in a ceasefire. Omar made the remarks while announcing that a list of participants for the proposed China meeting on Afghan peace has been finalized, which will represent the entire government and all Afghans, local media reports said. The Afghan government has repeatedly asserted that it sees ceasefire as a precondition for peace talks with the Taliban. Meanwhile, Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Geng Shuang said on Thursday that China firmly supports the broad and inclusive peace and reconciliation process that is Afghan-led and Afghan-owned. Respecting the interests of all parties, we stand ready to provide facilitation and assistance to the peace and reconciliation process, including intra-Afghan dialogue and negotiation, he said. The Taliban has announced that they were invited by the Chinese government and that a delegation from the group will attend the meeting. After depending on illicit crops like opium poppy to earn a living for years now, some farmers in Afghanistan's Kandahar province are reviving fields to harvest cotton. As poppy production is restricted in some parts of the country, local officials are hoping cotton production will be highly focused as an alternative crop. In Afghanistan's southern Kandahar province, where many farmers still highly depend on illicit crops like opium poppy, to earn a living, some farmers are reviving fields to harvest cotton. As poppy production is restricted in some parts of the country and the opium price has also dropped, local officials hope cotton production will be highly focused as an alternative crop in the province where poppy is grown heavily. Farmers in Kandahar are also urging government to support them in reviving the cotton fields in the province. <laughs> In 2018, some 6,400 tons of illicit poppy opium were produced in western and southern parts of Afghanistan, much lesser compared with the production in 2017, according to official figures. The government has also been trying to fight against the illicit drug trafficking in the country, but farmers who make profit out of poppy cultivation take Taliban's support to protect their poppy fields and also in selling of the illegal produce. The number of dengue cases have continued to rise across Nepal. A health official on Thursday said around 100 patients affected with the mosquito-borne disease visit hospitals in capital Kathmandu almost every day. Around 100 patients suffering from dengue fever visit hospitals across Nepal's capital Kathmandu on an average every day, a health official said on Thursday. 
According to Epidemiology and Disease Control Division of Nepal, six patients have died and over 14,000 patients suffering from the mosquito-borne disease have been registered across the Himalayan nation between July to early November. Earlier this year, over 3,000 people were infected three months before the latest epidemic took over. Unexpected outbreak followed by expected outbreak. Unexpected outbreak. The local municipality in the initial phase of the outbreak used smoke guns in a bid to control the spread of the disease, but such attempts have now been terminated, the doctor said. Dengue fever is primarily dangerous due to the possibility of recurrence. A patient who has the fever develops immunity to only one of the four variations of the virus that causes it. The fever most often affects children, middle-aged people and the elderly. A high-tech research center under government's mission in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir is helping farmers in boosting the production and quality of saffron. The center is providing them different techniques like high-tech dripping system and imported seeds to increase production. A high-tech research center in Pulwama district of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir is helping growers in boosting the production and quality of saffron in the region. The center in Pampur town of Pulwama district provides all types of modern facilities, including high-tech dripping system, which enables the farmers grow the best quality of product. The high-tech research center under government's national saffron mission was established by Sheri Kashmir University of Agriculture, Science and Technology a few years back as an experiment to improve the quality and quantity of saffron. दिन ब दिन जो सेफ्रान की प्रोडक्शन है वो कम होती जा रही थी इस सेफ्रान सिटेशन की बदौलत इन्होंने ऐसे तजुर्बों के यहां पे बहुत सारे तजुर्बे किए जिसके मदद से हमें बहुत मतलब प्रोडक्शन में इंप्रूवमेंट हो रही है इसमें हमारे पास जो इस वक्त तहकीक तजुर्बात हो रहे हैं वो सेफ्रान के ही मुतलक हो रहे हैं इसमें खासकर जो हमारे पास इस वक्त जो है सबसे पहले हम यह कह रहे हैं किसान भाई से कि पहले सबसे पहले एक सही میاری بیج کا انتخاب ہونا لازمی ہے اور اس کے علاوہ بیج کی بوائی وقت پر ہو The town of Pampur is considered the hub of Kashmir's saffron and is known worldwide for its best quality saffron The government of India also appreciates the quality saffron produced in the region and is taking different initiatives regularly to continue the production of one of the world's most expensive spices a buffalo weighing more than 2,000 pounds and worth $2 million has grabbed the spotlight at the Pushkar Fair in India. Primarily known for trade of animals, the annual Pushkar Fair is also famous as a dessert for carnival. With backward curving horns and a smooth grey-black hairless body, a prized buffalo worth $2 million is grabbing eyeballs at an annual fair in India's desert province of Rajasthan. Weighing more than 2,204 pounds and standing at a height of 6 feet, Buffalo Bheem is a sight to behold. Bheem is one of the 5,000 animals being showcased at the Pushkar Fair. These are the 15 crores of people Primarily an animal fair, the Pushkar Fair kicked off on November 4 and will conclude on November 12th. The annual fair offers a once-in-a-lifetime experience for tourists besides attracting hundreds of animal buyers. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianNewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend and good night.
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.